Welcome back to my channel. Um, I really want to thank so many of you for supporting what's going on with the writers and the actors strike. And I really appreciate all of your uh, positive feedback regarding alternate uh, content that I can do while the strike continues. I have confirmed that the Waltons is considered work that is being struck. So therefore I can't, I can't do segments about it right now or really talk about it, but uh, Everyone, for the most part, seems to be happy for me to go on and talk about other things. So um, I had some various different questions that people have asked that are on different topics. So I thought I would start with that. My first question is, um, I'm curious as to what made you an actor as far as how the bug bit, as they say. Um, so from that standpoint, it wasn't something that I was really consciously aware of saying, hey, I want to be an actor. Um, when I was very young, I had like dance classes and things like that. And my mother was taking singing lessons and her voice teacher did little recitals. So my brother and sister and I all took part in a little children's recital that was put together. And I just thought it was a lot of fun. So I was one of those kids who just love make believe and, and love getting attention and, uh, loved being in the spotlight. So I guess there was just uh, something within that that was fun for me. And then my father was working with someone who, someone that he worked with had his children who were doing work in commercials or whatever. And so my dad asked questions, found out about the various different ways one could get their children started. And so it kind of went from there. My brother and sister and I all started doing a little bit of background work in, in commercials and, and shows and things like that. I also, my sister and I did a year long children's production on the weekends of um, a children's production of Cinderella. Uh, I remember auditioning for and thinking I wanted to be Cinderella and I, I was cast as a countess at the ball. And I thought, well, that's odd. I don't remember there being a countess at the ball that particularly being a part. But it was what it was, and um, and so I did that. And then at some point along the line, right towards the end, I got to play one of the stepsisters, the mean stepsisters. They were called Meanie and Greenie. And Greenie had sprayed on green hair, and, and Meanie had sprayed on purple hair. And I remember my sister played, I think, Meanie. And then right towards the end of the run, I got to play Greenie for... Um, a few weekends. So that was a lot of fun. So just doing it, it was just, it was fun. And so I was interested in continuing. My my dad helped us get an agent. Uh, I'm the only one. My brother sort of didn't really pursue it. And my sister hit a point. I, I think Debbie Gunn talked about this, those points where agents say things that might be realistic within the industry, but are not necessarily the type of thing that is I think good to tell a child. My sister had braces. And so it's like, oh, well, come back when you don't have braces. So she kind of dropped out of it. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, you know, get sporadic work and stuff. And whether how far I would have pursued it if I hadn't gotten the role in the Waltons, I don't know. If I were only working once in a while, uh, I probably would have maybe chosen some other more uh, predictable profession, uh, which acting is not as much as I loved it. But along the way, you know, I took a lot of lessons and, and stuff like that. And also as when I was about 10, I joined a repertory theater company in LA. I had gone to audition for a production of Wait Until Dark and um, for one company, and I didn't get the role, but somehow another director was doing a production and heard about uh, heard about me or something. My name was passed along. And so he cast me in his production. And so I did that for however long the run was. And this was, uh, I think I've spoken about this, but for those of you who didn't catch that episode, it was um, actor, director, writer, Jonathan Daly. He was in um, Petticoat Junction, amongst other things. So he had this um, actors group and theater company. And when we weren't doing productions, then he ran an acting class. And so I attended that for 
um, several years, I think from about 10 till about 13, actually probably 14 when I started doing the series and just didn't, my schedule wouldn't allow me to do both. Uh, so I absolutely loved that and, and we did productions. Jonathan wrote the scripts and he wrote them for the people in the company and to stretch us as actors or also so that everybody had a role. And I was, my sister was with the company for a while, uh, but then when she left, I was the only child in the company. So I was very grateful that they allowed me to be part of the company. But you know, I was kind of, um, I was mature for my age. I always knew my lines. I always knew everybody's lines in the show. For some reason, memorizing lines was not hard for me. And when I was around a show and hearing the scenes over and over, I just knew what they were. Uh, so I could have recited you the entire play um, probably at any given time. Uh, I also worked behind the scenes. I did, I helped with props and different things like that. Everybody, everybody helped with different aspects of putting the show together. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then of course I got cast, uh, you know, as Mary Ellen and, and that became my life from that point forward. So there was another question here. I know others love makeup, dressing, costuming, other aspects of the business. Did any of those careers interest you too? Um, as I mentioned in the, in the theater, I ended up doing a number of other things and, and I'll get more into the theater work that I did in Canada. Uh, but with that company, I certainly was very involved in helping build sets and, and building costumes and people just did everything because it was that kind of a company where it was small and everybody took part. So I have enjoyed a lot of those aspects. I don't think I ever considered pursuing it professionally in film and television, but um, if I had not been acting, who knows, maybe some other area of that might have interested me and I might have pursued that. This question is from Jonathan Stevens who asked me um, what some of my memories with my coworkers were just as people and away from the work and things like that. Um, so as far as castmates went, some of the things that really stand out for me were like with Will Gear, he always uh, impressed upon us the importance of appreciating the work. Um, probably because of the years he spent being blacklisted and not able to do the work, he always had a great appreciation for it. I can't say that I did every single day when it got tedious and I was tired and I felt it was monotonous, but it always stuck with me. And I did, there were days where I took a moment to, to say, literally check in and go, I am appreciating the fact that I'm here and I get to do this and I love what I do. Um, so thank you to Will for that. Also, some of the opportunities that he gave us. Um, I spoke about getting to do that um, that performance at the Hollywood Bowl where uh, it was like a, some sort of a benefit and there were all these various different actors that I got to interact with and um, a number of my castmates were there and we did some Shakespeare and I got to perform at the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, it was amazing. And that was, you know, that was Will just bringing us along, the younger castmates and letting us be a part of that world. Ellen Corby, um, she was a real mentor to me in many ways. And she was always an example of professionalism and details and things like that and being prepared and being on time and doing your job. And um, I know Cammie talked about her helping Cammie with um, how you had to match, match your action, you know, and, and do the same thing each take so that the editing together worked. So I always, I always really respected her and she set a good example with that all the time. Uh, and she was fun. She, she went and did things with us. She went, when we got an opportunity to go, Elton John uh, had come to the set to, to visit and we got to meet him. And then he gave us tickets to his, um, I think it was the Yellow Brick Road tour concert. And Ellen went with us and we had these fabulous seats and Ellen was there and up with us and, you know, and, and dancing. She was, she was a lot of fun and, and she was not like, unlike the character she played, she was not at all a stick in the mud. She, she was an adventurer. She did a lot of traveling and these wonderful stories about starting out as a script girl and 
um, you know, working for pennies, you know, or, you know, like, I don't whatever it was, $7 a week, something, you know, something, uh, you know, very minimal. Uh, and that was where she cut her teeth and where her sense of continuity and matching came from, from was from, you know, being a script, a script girl. So uh, there were many of those sort of like uh, PR adventures that we did. Uh, we went to some wild animal park and, and Ellen, you know, she was holding the birds and the monkeys and, you know, she was, she was quite, quite fearless in many ways. So um, always adored. Ellen. Ralph, one of my key things that stands out for me, a memory of Ralph Waite, was years after the series when um, the girls, Mary, I believe Cammy was there, Leslie Winston, Winston was there, and we went to lunch with Ralph. And um, it was it was one of the first times that we just had sort of life conversations and personal conversations. And and it was the first time, actually, he shared about how the Waltons had uh, helped him get sober and how it was really uh, one day sitting around the table and, you know, in the kitchen table and looking at all of us and recognizing that he was playing this character that was this role model and how he felt like he was such a fraud and, in a sense, wanted to live up to what that role represented and so that was when he went to AA and got sober and never looked back. So I had never heard that story, um, that it was really the show and, and, and that influence that helped him get sober. So that meant a lot to me that we were a part of helping him change his life and I felt that it was really in later years that I began to know him a little better as a person um, because there was you know quite a Obviously, he was a parent figure when I was when I was a child, you know, a teen on the show, um, and so I didn't feel like I got to know him as much as a person until later when I was an adult. Um, and one of my last memories of him was a party at Michael's house when most of the cast was there, and you know, he just those of us who were there, he just talked to all of us, kind of went around the room. We were all sort of sitting around you know, Michael's living room, and he, and he just asked each of us what we were doing and were we happy, and um, and then he passed away not too long after that, and, and knowing, he always sort of wondered if he knew uh, he was in poorer health than any of us knew, and that if he he sort of wanted that, that check-in, um, but it meant a lot to me. Um, Michael. Um, again, got to know her better as an adult, and we used to go to lunch, you know. She and Mary and I would, would go to lunch frequently, and just, again, we were just people. We would talk about life and relationships and our families and different things that were going on, and, and I've had any number of those sorts of conversations with Michael, and I really cherish those times where it was really about us as people, and we would sometimes talk about work um, and things, but uh, and characters, but not so much. It was more who we were and what was of interest to us as people. So I really, really, I really loved that. John Wamsley. Uh, we would do things together sometimes. One of the things that stands out to me was he took me, I don't think I could even drive yet, I was probably like 15, he took me to um, a concert at the Hollywood Bowl to see Stephen Stills. And um, so, you know, that was fun. That's a memory that just stands out to me. Uh, Eric, uh, us, we would, in hiatus, we would ride our bikes to meet up and hang out together when we weren't working. And, and just, you know, just, just like you would with any, any friend. Mary and I, same thing. We, would, we, we did a lot of things together because we were closest in age as we became adults. And I've mentioned that she and I went on a cruise, a Caribbean cruise together at one point and had a great time and found out how in sync we were, that when we sat down to figure out, well, what sort of excursions do we want to do, that we were on the same page. Here, let's go do this. And then here, let's go do that. Let's take this tour. Oh, this day we just want to hang on the Contiki boat and, you know, and have a cocktail and go to the beach. And it, she was just such an easy roommate and travel companion. So I really appreciate that. We would go and fly to support. I went to see her when she was doing 
a theater production, I think in, in Texas or something. And then I later ended up working for that company and doing a, a show for them. And she came out when I did my first big musical with the Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera, she flew out to see my show and that meant so much to me. Um, so we would do things like that to support each other. Um, so she and I definitely you know, were, have been very close and, and shared a lot of personal adventures over the years. Um, Cammie, I remember taking shopping, clothes shopping. She was, she was at a point where she's like, I don't know what clothes I should buy or what to, how to put, how to put an outfit together. And I remember taking her to the mall and taking her shopping and finding some things, you know, a few outfits, a few mix and match pieces to help her put her wardrobe together. And so I really felt like a big sister there. And like, I was, I was really maybe hopefully being of some help to her there. Uh, David, I don't remember doing things with particularly one-on-one -on -one, because he was the youngest of the boys. And so I think I felt like I had the least in common with him uh, when we were, when there was that age difference and that he was a boy. And, um, but certainly we did so many publicity things together, all of us when we were young. So we had all of those outside the work adventures. Uh, another one I remember with Eric is we went to, um, we were doing some sort of a, a PR event, and I don't even remember what city it was in, but I remember, I think his brother went with him because we were underage, so we each had to have a guardian who was 18 or older. And I think I think my sister went with me, and I think his brother went with him. And we were at some restaurant one night, and it must have been a place where they didn't really card people um, because we were probably like 17 or something like that. So we were we were pretty close to you know, to being 18 and at least where well, we wouldn't have needed a guardian. But for some reason at this dinner that we were at, they kept going to Eric. Like they, when they were, um, when they were doing the opening the wine and, and you know, how they'll give the cork to somebody, they gave, they gave the cork to Eric to check it out. He's like, um, yeah, sure. Um, and, and it was one where then it was a very fancy meal. So there were the, at some point between courses, they served this sorbet and it was like a taste changer. And we were so like unsophisticated and we're like, what is this? What's my, oh yes, a taste change. And I just remember us having this, like we were all giggling and because we were so, it was so above our heads, but we had a, we had a wonderful time. Um, Cammie and I went to open an exhibit, a new, some sort of a new exhibit at SeaWorld in, in Ohio. And I remember being hot and humid and us cutting the ribbon and getting to hang out. And it was, I think, a new children's section of, of, the, um, of the park. And of course, Cammie had a wonderful time playing on all the stuff because she was still quite little. I was a little, a little older, but I still enjoyed it because I've always still been a kid when it comes to uh, parks and and um, amusement parks and, and animal parks. So we had, um, we had fun. So those types of things. I remember doing a press junket with John Walmsley and some of the silly things that, that, that some of the affiliates wanted us to say to promote the show. Um, and then meeting a lot of other wonderful actors who were doing new CBS shows at the time. And um, so I have many, many fond uh, fond memories of, of things away from the work with my castmates. And that wraps up this segment of Behind the Scenes with Judy. I'll be back with more of your questions. You have lots of interesting questions and um, it's fun for me to talk about other aspects in, in more detail. So I hope you're having fun and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.